Now, to really understand price action means to study what has happened in the past, then observe what is happening in the present, and then predict where the market might go in the future. Price action is among the most popular trading concepts. A trader who knows how to use price action the right way can often improve his performance and his way of looking at charts significantly. Now, however, there are still a lot of misunderstandings and half-truths circulating that confuse traders and set them up for failure. In this webinar, we're going to explore the eight most popular price action secrets and share the best price action tips. Now, what is price action? It's a, favor, it's a favorite among short and medium term traders. Price action trading brings together an interesting mixture of information and different views. These include historic price patterns, technical indicators, and an investor's ability to read the markets. Many investors see the stock market as an information exchange where all views and strategies meet and they will arrive at a fair price in the end. Now, as many of the decisions associated with price action trading are subjective, what one investor sees as a breakout, another may see as a potential price reversal. Compare and contrast this with pure technical analysis where you effectively ignore the experience of investors in favor of cold hard trends. Human nature dictates that futures and commodity prices are extremely volatile. Now, overbought situations are often created because of fear and greed, while panic selling can take it over in the event of disappointing news. These are types of scenarios where price action investment strategies can prove extremely lucrative. Now, ultimately, the key to reading price action is reading your charts. So the key to reading ch price chart action charts is to take in short-term fluctuations. It also is critical to notice emerging trends and focus on patterns which repeat time and time again. You will hear swing, talk of swing patterns, support and resistance, wave analysis, trend lines, moving averages, to name a few different chart patterns. Candlesticks and bars are also very popular. For example, when a chart is about to crash through a support level, it is unlikely to do it in one fell swoop. You may see an index or a commodity contract price initially bouncing off the support level as investors look to benefit from short-term trade sell-offs. As short-term trade sell-offs into the bounce, buying interest begins to wane and sellers again take control. So there are some price patterns that are fairly reliable, but you cannot whether you're looking at a symmetrical triangle, a, a descending and ascending triangle, whether you're looking at a head and shoulders pattern, whether you're looking at a wedge, whether you're looking at a double bottom and a double top or a head and shoulders or a cup and saucer, you can't take them on their own. Okay. They often help us read what price is about to do, but we need them to work together with other pieces of information on your charts, like support and resistance levels, like volume, Eventually, the price will crash through the support level, often prompting an array of short selling. So how do we read these price action charts? Well, we're not going to spend much time, we're not going to spend any time at all, really, today discussing the different types of charts. You know, we're, we're of the assumption tonight that you know the difference between a bar chart and a candlestick chart, and you know how to set your charts up and how to use time frames and you also know what a line chart is and you, you know all those stuff but once you understand what they really mean you will start to notice many of them on charts you look at every day because once you have an understanding of your charts you'll see many of the patterns and you start to see these pretty easy so what price patterns are important to us let me, I actually have a live chart where I've kind of put these all together, but let me pop up some live charts here for you.
Okay, this is what I call market structure. These are the typical patterns that you will see, you know, that are common on your charts that will occur during, an, you know, in any type of trading period. And we go from double bottoms to bull flags to bull pennants to descending wedges, ascending wedges, triple tops, bear flags, bear pennants, inverted head and shoulders, inverted cup and handle, expanding wedge, cup and handle, head and shoulder. Remember, for everyone that's one way, there's always the opposite. So we could cut these in half. When we look at a bear pennant, we have a bear flag. A bear, we have a bull flag pennant. We also have a bear flag and a bullish flag. We have an inverted head and shoulders and a right side up head and shoulders. These are the most common. Now, believe me, you will look in the internet and you will see hundreds and hundreds of more patterns that some guru out there is pushing. The other day I saw a flying saucer. I saw, oh, I'm trying to remember the Some of these were really weird names. And they come up with all of these things that they see when they see it on their chart. They know the asset's going to do something. Well, these patterns you're looking at are the standard patterns. They have withstood the test of time. These are not something that I came up with to show you. These are not something so that came around when we started trading, online trading with CFDs. These have been around for a very, very, very long time. For as long as historical charts have been available. So these patterns have been tested. When we see them, we can use them to predict some movement in the market. Some action is going to happen. Doesn't mean that action is always right or wrong. Here's a beautiful triangle. Okay. Now, we could have expected a continuation and a breakout to the upside, but we had to be prepared down here when we started to see, but ended up a false breakout to the downside. Here, are two beautiful triangles. Here we have a nice wedge formation. And, you know, again, we got a false breakout here. If we would have tried to trade that, come on, let's turn you the right way. If we would have been trying to trade out and go short, we would have been in for a losing trade because it turned right around and went straight up. But we have to understand how to read these patterns and what is a good breakout and what is a bad or false breakout. But there are many patterns that we can use. Here is a simple channel and a break above resistance. And look at that. That channel was continued up. We broke the resistance. And what do we go into? A beautiful uptrend. Here we have double tops and double bottoms. We could have traded this each time it hit the top and the bottom, each time it hit the top and the bottom. Then we eventually got a breakout and we got it price moving into a strong uptrend. And here is another beautiful triangle. Everything worked perfectly with this triangle. It would have made an easy trade. We got the breakout candle. We got the confirmation candle and we had the entry candle. Everything could have been right. We could have gotten our target point by measuring the width of the base. We could have set, figured out where to put our stop loss, which would have been right about down here. And we would have had an easy setup for a trade. But this doesn't happen that often. I mean, we're not gonna get rich because we have hundreds of trades to make every day. And this, hap this happens to be a beautiful, unique, easy to see pattern. But these patterns do occur quite often in regular trading. You just have to know what to look for. So one of the ones you read about and hear about the most is a head and shoulders. Now a head and shoulders pattern is fairly reliable, except in our type of trading, we don't see it that often. It appears on the charts, but it, a, a head and shoulders pattern takes quite a while to develop and you usually don't see it toward till the end 
I don't notice them at all. Unless somebody points out and says, there's a head and shoulders. But you'll read about them all the time. Analysts will be noticing, oh, it's in, you know, it's forming the, the last leg of the head and shoulders pattern. Or you can see the neckline, you can see the heads, you can see the shoulders. And all of this helps you because it is a strong reversal pattern. And it helps you put, say, your stop loss, your take profit in your entry point. But we have bullish head and shoulders. A bullish head and shoulder is when price is moving down, we forget the formation of head and shoulders, and that's telling us a reversal is in place, and we're going to get an uptrend. Now, what we get is it's never smooth and easy. It's never clean and neat. But we get one shoulder forming, we get the head. The important thing is the neckline, which could be a double pop, if you could want to call it that way. We get the formation of the right shoulder. And then we get that right shoulder is equal of the left shoulder. And then we get the break of that neckline. And that tells us that pattern, that, that price is now reversed and you could take a long trade. Now, a double bottom trend is very easy to explain. It's, as, it's closely related to technical analysis as it is to human nature. Now, I showed you one on one of the live charts. The initial large fall in price will attempt will tempt in those who are closing short positions and those who are looking for a short-term bounce. After initial bounce, those sellers who missed out on the previous downturn are determined not to miss out again, and they push the price down to create the double bottom. <clears throat> now, there is an indication of support around the level of the two low points with a gradual recovery back towards the resistance line. Now, let's go back and look at that on a live chart again. So here, what happened is price pushed up, bounced off of this top here. And what happened was it had a sell off here, a seller, seller, sellers. Then the buyers jumped back in the market, pushed it back up, but couldn't break that previous high. And it came back down to form that double bottom again, went sideways congestion, but back to that top again, came back down to that bottom. We could have traded that up and down, up and down, up and down. Sooner or later, it's going to break out. That's why you always have to be careful to set your, your stop losses in the correct place and get out of the market when it breaks. But we could see here, touched the top, came back down to the bottom again. Now it hung at that bottom, formed a congestion, and then it broke out of that bottom. We would have gotten out of the market just about there, maybe down here, but then it moved into an uptrend. Now, there's an indication of support around the level of the two lows with a gradual recovery towards the resistance level. When typically, what typically happens is this initial sell-off goes overboard and the buyers return right after and then push the price through the resistance level and back towards the previous levels. So what do you see? Double bottom down, up, down, up. Again, like I said, when you look at that in the chart, it's not so graceful as if you see it on the graphics. And then we have a triple bottom. Now, the pattern we were looking for on that live chart was closer to a triple bottom. The more times it becomes a double bottom to a triple bottom, the more reliable it is, the more times it forms that top and the bottom. But you have to know that sooner or later, it's going to break through the resistance or the support level. Then we have something that's fairly unique. I don't really, it's not that I don't believe it. I don't actually see it on my charts. I, you know, some things, are, like I can see a triangle everywhere. My eyes just don't pick up certain things, okay? A rounding bottom is a quite interesting format. When you see price edging around and you can almost draw a semicircle underneath of it or an oval underneath of it, and you can see it gradually flipping from the down to the up. And then we come to what's called bullish island reversals and, and bullish rectangles. Okay, a rectangle is very similar to a top and a bottom, a double top or a double bottom. And then we come to bullish wedges. Bullish wedges to me fit into what I call triangles, asymmetrical, symmetrical, ascending, descending, Bullish wedge, bearish wedge, bullish pennant, bearish pennant. They're all 
two angular lines moving into each other. And as the resistance and the support lines above and below converge, now the difference between a wedge, an ascending triangle, descending triangle symmetric, are the angles at which these wedges or these edges are coming together or converging on each other. That's the only difference. Now, there's lots of people out there that want to give you very specific rules about triangles. Okay, I firmly believe triangles. I tra I'm a triangle trader. Tri triangles and, and, and support and resistance and volume are my babies. Okay. But I don't care whether it's an ascending triangle, a descending triangle, a bullish wedge, a bearish wedge. Okay. I say when we have a triangle, price is getting pushed into the apex. It's getting pushed into the center. Let's go look at this in a live chart. Hold on a second. Okay. So what we have now, this triangle is an ascending triangle. Because what we have is the bottom line, or the bottom, yeah, the bottom trend line and the bottom line is on an angle upward, where the resistance line is horizontal. So we are ascending, the triangle is ascending. A descending triangle is just the exact opposite. Okay. I don't care, okay? There are rules, okay? There are people that wanna give you these stun, it's like, it's like with candlesticks. They say, when you see this, you do this and you do that and you do it blindly. I say, when you have a triangle, regardless of what it is, you've gotta wait for a breakout. When you get the breakout, that's when you're gonna determine which way price is gonna move. Because price can break down and it can break up. And too many people want to say when you have an ascending triangle, you're going to get, it's a continuation pattern and you should be making all your rules and doing everything or the character of it is a bullish move. Okay. When you start getting tied up into these preconceived notions of what you should do as opposed to letting the charts tell you what you should be doing, you tend to make mistakes. Now, my rule of thumb is on any triangle or wedge, I want it to break out. When it breaks my support or my resistance line, regardless of what angle it is, okay, I can't be sure that that's not a false breakout. So I need my breakout candle. After that, I need a confirmation candle. That candle re can close inside, but it stayed, you know, it opened at the close the previous candle. Now that you see this candle move back in. So I wouldn't have been ready to set up a trade. I was, I'm at the point at this point of saying it's a false breakout. But then I get my following confirmation candle. It now has stayed, it reversed the red candle and it's remained outside of the triangle. So it's now confirmed. Now I'm not entering it. I have not entered a trade yet because I would enter my trade at the next candle. And I would set my entry point at the high, at the, I'm sorry, at the close of the first breakout candle. When the confirmation candle hits that price, I would have then executed a trade upward. Because if it was gonna break back down into the triangle, okay, my trade would have never been executed at the price point. So I would have never had a trade. If it went up one more and came back in, my stop loss would have been down here and I would have been stopped out with a very small loss. Same thing here on the wedge. See here, we broke out downwards, but we didn't have any confirmation candle. We had our next candle, but then if we would have set up our trade to enter, what happened was the candle reversed and went back in. Our trade would have never been executed. Then up here, we got the candle, the breakout again, breakout, breakout confirmation, we would enter the trade right here, and we would have been able to capitalize on this entire move. Okay. Again here, you see it, you have many times where the candle breaks below, but now we have the exact opposite triangle. And here, price broke out. We had our next candle, our confirmation candle, our entry candle, we would have entered our trade here, and we would have been able to take that trade all the way up to this point. Now this, again, is a beautiful triangle. What is it? 
Well, it's like a symmetrical triangle, except it looks ugly. But again, we got a false breakout, price moved back into the triangle, and then we got, sorry about that. And then we got a confirmation, a breakout, a confirmation candle, and we would have taken our long trade. So whether we have an ascending triangle, a descending triangle, we're going to look at them as all angular for price formation. The price is moving to the apex. Now, the key to any successful price action trading strategy is to remove peripheral noise, such as fundamental data and look at price patterns, trends, and other forms of technical analysis. When combined with good old fashioned experience, and a feel for the markets, this can create a very successful investment strategy. Don't forget, even if you have opened a position based on any of the following price action trading setups, you can also use technical data to set stop loss limits. Don't ever, ever trade without a stop loss. Because the, the idea of trading patterns is you're trading the breakout, but you're setting your stop loss in case it's a, a, a false breakout. So, if it does move against you and moves back into the pattern, you, you end up trading your close out, you end up closing out your trade with a small little loss. But statistically, you'll end up with more gains than you will losses. So at the end of the day, the end of the week, you'll end up with a positive P and L. So one of the key aspects of price action trading when using support and resistance level is the fact that once a support level is breached, it can then turn into resistance and vice versa. Now, this is one of the most important things because on any pattern, whether you're looking at a triangle, whether you're looking at a wedge, whether you're looking at a head and shoulders, you are setting levels of support and resistance. Okay? And what you have to do is you have to look at those support and resistance and the next support and resistance levels above and below because you want to make sure that the move has some move, some direction to go to. I mean, if you have a breakout and you're, it's moving right to a, a heavy line of resistance, maybe you don't want to make that trade because it's going to price it and have a tough point at that level of resistance. Now, it's worth noting that while traders tend to focus on volatile periods of, for contract and, and commodity prices, most of the time they tend to trade sideways markets all within a relatively modest trading range. So remember, we have support and resistance. These are prices that have been important to the, in the journey of the price up and down. Like I explained, they're like the floors of an elevator. You need to know what floors are above you and below you in your chart pattern to make sure that you have the room to move and that they make sense that you're interpreting it. Now, there are certain types of price movements we see on charts that we can combine with support and resistance and chart patterns to help us to understand if this is a good move or a bad move, whether it's a false move or a, a, an actual breakout. And these are things like pin bar and inside bar combos. You can't just ignore... You can't just look and say, oh, I broke out of my, my pattern. You have to look at the candles, not only as a confirmation candle and a breakout candle, but what are those candles? What do they look like? Pin bars and inside bar candles are a key to look at when determining if you want to make that trade. Many price action traders are extremely vigilant. They're always on the lookout for what is known as the inside bar pattern. You can recognize these by the emergence of a secondary bar within the body of the previous bar. Now, we have a whole entire class on what we call the mother bar strategy. So the first bar is a longer bar, the opposite color, and then you get an inside bar. The new bar is contained, the whole price movement is contained within the body of the previous ca candle. And this is a good clue when you're looking at a breakout of a chart pattern that you're looking at a strong breakout. The primary bar is sometimes called the mother bar 
and will often indicate a period of consolidation and potential turning points from key support and resistance. This is the beginning of changing trend and marks a downward movement. To see other mother bar inside bar occurrences is a currency. But if we combine this with support and resistance level and see the mother bar forming at a support and resistance level with a breakout of a, a triangle pattern or a head and shoulders pattern or a double you know, bottom or double top, we have three key pieces of information telling us that we have a potential trade. It's only when you take the time to understand how bar patterns emerge and what they indicate that you can position your trades. Don't forget to also keep one eye on stop loss limits at all times. Remember, you always have to be looking at where your stop loss is and your potential target to calculate your risk reward ratios to see if you can even consider making the trade. So as you gather from all the information, price action trading is based on around trends and momentum. The idea is simple. Once a trend changes, then the momentum often grows. It's only when a stronger opposing trend emerges that the direction changes again. In between these relatively strong trends, there will be periods of consolidation, sideways trading and price will bounce off of support and resistance. When it does that, support and resistance, what's it doing? Forming double tops and double bottoms. In many ways, support and resistance levels are self-fulfilling prophecies. Many traders now use technical analysis and take them into consideration. However, price action trading offers the best of both worlds with both technical analysis and human input from a trader. Don't take price action with a trade until the market itself confirms your opinion. Volume can always be your final confirmation. When you have a breakout of a chart pattern, a move above a resistance or support level, and a maybe a pin bar, maybe a confirmation candle, you should see volume confirming. So in other words, you don't wanna be an impatient trader. You wanna wait till you have everything in place and you have con confirmation. Now there are numerous disadvantages and advantages of using price action trading strategies. And ultimately it comes down to how disciplined you are as a trader. Now, you will find there are relatively low number of trades because you're waiting for everything to set up perfectly. Now in my life, if I do 10 trades a month, it's a lot. I wait for the most perfect trade, but that's me. Okay. Other traders want to tra trade, make 10 trades in a day. Okay, everybody's different. But you, when you're using this one setup or this one set of parameters, you need to make sure that it's perfectly set up. So as you are effectively waiting for the price trend to cut through the support level or to shoot through a resistance level, you can end up with a relatively low number of trades. I use every filter system I can to disqualify a trade. Ultimately, traders using price action trading are often caught out by significant shifts in the market. And yes, I can miss some big moves. This often means prices do not return to their preferred trading levels. For those lacking discipline, they can end up chasing price higher and higher. Meanwhile, for those who are able to remain focused on the technical situation, opportunities will emerge. We want to look for definitive changes in trends. Many of the strategies we mentioned above be overcautious or can be considered overcautious by some people. When waiting for a definitive change in trend, there may be times when intraday prices could spike above resistance support and then recover. These could be false flags and can be potentially expensive in the long run. So as we touch, while price action trading is based on technical analysis and reading of the situation, it's not always cut and dry. Some examples of price action trading include after hitting a new high and exchange rate falls back as a result of profit taking. While it will depend on support and resistance levels, one trader may expect a double top and then move to higher ground. However, a different trader may see this as a start of a new downward trend. If the scenario continued, continued profit taking could push the price below the support level. One classic indicator that a trend is changing is high trading volume. So if the price is stuck 
in a bound range, bounce between resistance and support. Under relatively low volumes, one investor may see this as a trading opportunity, while another investor may see it as a lack of interest and assume a likely breakthrough the support level at some point, prompting a strong momentum trade. Like we saw on the chart where I had the two gold boxes. Yeah, but we would have gotten a lot of trading between those support and resistance congestion areas and a lot of successful trading until it decided to make that break into the uptrend. The answer is to this question is yes in the right hand. Price action strategies can highlight periods of consolidation, the emergence of new trends and phases of sideways trading. The key is to see what's in front of you as opposed to trying to manipulate the chart data into what you want to see. The basic difference is that price action incorporates both technical analysis and human input. Effectively, you are monitoring emerging trends and reading these with varying degrees of discipline and experience. While there's a human degree to input with regards to price action trading, there's also a need to be disciplined even if you are marginally miss out on several trades. So remember, we want to look for our bar patterns. We want to look at our support and resistance levels. We want to look at our chart patterns. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope I gave you something to think about. And we'll talk to you again next Tuesday in another class. Have a great now, a great week now. And remember, we do have a whole class in inside bar trading and mother bar trading. So we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.